Hey, Matthew, thanks for being here today with us. How's it going? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, so a bit about myself, you know, I'm, I do uh, Red Team full-time as a job, but obviously do a lot of, you know, security work on the side as well, my own personal time. Um, I think most notably is, you know, running Access Center, Hunter, uh, writing a lot of open source security tools and security research, stuff like that. So. That is awesome. You already mentioned it. Access, Ent Access Center is the tool we're here for today. Can you maybe give us a little bit of an insight? What is Access S Hunter in a nutshell? Yeah, so uh, Access S Hunter is sort of a service that I built to make finding blind cross-site scripting vulnerabilities a good bit easier for people. Um, you know, when I first built it, it was um, something that I was hearing a lot of people say, you know, I don't think this vulnerability is super common. And I think a lot of that was just due to there not being like really easy tooling available to sort of look for the issue. And so I built it essentially to sort of help people find these vulnerabilities uh, much easier and also to sort of raise awareness of the vulnerability type in general. So That, that is pretty cool. Um, I'm wondering when you set out to create this tool, did you check for alternatives? Were there alternatives um, around um, already when you started or did you just say, no, you know what, I will just start with Access S Center and I will just make this my own thing? Yeah, so um, at the time there 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 was an existing one which I tried, which was uh, called it's called Sleepy Puppy, um, and I actually did <laughs> I went and set that all up, but I was actually having issues uh, sort of using it uh, in practice, and uh, because of this, like I ended up you know sort of giving up on trying to get the, the solution working, ended up sort of building at the time you know a sort of small temporary version for myself just to like have a good POC for you know, finding these vulnerabilities. And then that sort of evolved into the, the greater project that, you know, is kind of more widely used now. Okay. That makes sense. Also, you, you have it way more under your control, obviously, if it's, if it's your own baby, that is, that's pretty cool. I want to talk about tool creation in general a little bit. So what tax stack is Access S Hunter uh, using? What is it written in and, and why exactly did you pick that? Yeah, so there's kind of a distinction I probably need to make, which is, you know, there's like the online hosted version of XSS Hunter, um, which is running sort of the earlier version. Um, and then there's like the, the, the XSS Hunter Express one, which I've made, which is like a very easy to set up one. They're sort of written in different languages and different stacks. Um, but the one that's, that's sort of hosted in, and online is uh, written in Python. Um, and that was uh, something I chose just because it was the most familiar language for me at the time. And also it's like generally pretty widely you know known security it's one of the languages that there right. isn't you know not there's not universal you know usage of it but most hackers are pretty familiar with python and so you know it's not super foreign to them so no that makes that makes perfect sense um I don't know if you you notice, but we have a lot of people I mean integrity has more than forty thousand researchers and some of them or a lot of them they actually want to create tools and what we see is they're sometimes a little overwhelmed by by the fact that there is a big tech stack out there, there are so many different technologies out there that you can use um, you as a tool creator what is your recommendation recommendation to newbies to new people when they um, start out when they want to create a tool like where do they start yeah, so one of the things I would say is, you know, there's a lot of uh, in software development, there's kind of um, almost like this feeling that there's like the, the, the perfect or correct sort of list of technologies to use when you build projects. And there's always seems to be like a new one that's like, this is what everybody should use, you know, no exceptions. But really, like, you know, don't be afraid to write a, a truly terrible version of the software first. Like all of my initial drafts of everything I built have been very crude, you know, hacked together things you know, in Python or whatever language. Um, so I would definitely recommend like build a very simplistic version that just does what you're trying to do. And then you can always improve on it later. And then, you know, don't be afraid to also like publish code that is not like perfect, right? Because oftentimes, you know, when I'm looking for uh, sort of tools to sort of help with the hacking thing that I'm working on, I'll find, you know, gross snippets on GitHub and that's infinitely better than having nothing. So don't, you know, right. feel afraid to publish what you've got. Yeah. Do you think that embarrassment is is a big problem? Like, I, I feel like people, as you were just saying, like the usual first pack is is crappy. Do you think people are sometimes embarrassed to to post that, like in the public GitHub repository, because others could say, "Ooh, look at this person, he cannot code," or something like that? 
Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's really common. There's kind of like, um, you know, this is just, I think, part of just the internet. You have infinite numbers of opinions that aren't always, you know, people can be extremely critical of stuff and it's super easy to criticize, you know, random software posted. Um, and that can often kind of, I think, discourage people where they're worried that they're going to be judged based off of like some of the code that they've posted, you know. And honestly, you know, I am never judgmental when people post stuff because it's, you know, trying and even trying and building something at all is infinitely better than sort of like not doing it, you know, so. Uh, right. No, I fully agree with you on that one. And it's it's great to hear that. And yeah, let's encourage people to, to write code and to share it. Um, so if you like knee deep into the process of creating a tool coding, what are like common roadblocks you, you know of and, and how do you overcome those? Yeah. So I think one of the most common roadblocks that I think I encounter, I, I think probably most developers encounter this as well is, you know, we starting a project is one thing where you're sort of like initially interested in it and you're like, oh, I'm you know, excited to start building this thing. Um, but it's another thing to sort of follow it all the way to the end. Uh, you know, there's sort of like tends to be a point where it's like, oh, you know, I've been running this for a while and the initial excitement's kind of worn off and it's tough for me to continue this. Uh, so I would encourage people to like you know, get past that, that, that sort of like rough spot where it's like, I right, really keep pushing and sort of pull this whole thing off. Uh, uh, it can be challenging because you know, it's very tempting to sort of be like, oh, well, there's another thing I could be building. Um, but that figuring out how to sort of get past that that rough spot and finishing and completing and publishing stuff has been a big thing for me personally, at least. So it definitely would probably be that. Um, I mean, so you, th this sounds to me like you're speaking a little bit about motivation. Um, looking at you and Access S Hunter, how did you overcome that then? Like, uh, I'm assuming you had this point where you wanted to stop. What did you do to get you back on track? Yeah. So, you know, when I first, when I wrote the first version of Access Hunter, it took quite a while. You know, I also wasn't as, you know, I didn't have as much experience sort of developing as I do now. So it takes usually longer to build things because you don't know all the abstractions. You're not super familiar with all the tooling, all the stuff that you can build to make things a little bit more expedient. Um, and so it took, took quite a while. And a lot of times, like for me, uh, the biggest part about sort of getting past the rough patch of, you know, the initial excitement sort of worn off, you're still trying to bring it to completion is just um, being able to sort of like make time in the day to actually do a little bit of progress on it. And like, just, just do a teeny bit of progress and like, you know, it's just like starting is usually the hardest part. Cause once I sort of like get into it, then it's actually like, oh, this isn't so bad. I can actually do this, you know? So a lot of it is mainly just like scheduling some time to actually just sit down and start it and you know, make a little bit of progress mm -hmm. each day. And when you start it and you actually get into it, you know, usually it's much easier at that point because you're like in the headspace again, you can actually make progress. So that's the biggest thing is like blocking off time, sitting down, actually getting a start on it. Did you, did you create Access Center during, I don't know, your, your time at university or were you already at, at, at a job or like, did you maybe even have time during a job? How did that look like for you? Yeah, so I think this is another good topic too. So I was at a, I was at a job. Um, most of my tooling, I think, has been created while I've been you know sort of working, and that's always been the biggest challenge for me is sort of balancing the because you know full time job is already quite a bit of work, and so finding time outside of that to you know write software is a whole ordeal. Um, so right. most of this is just sort of written like you know, it's like a bit of time after work or during the weekends or any sort of, sort of downtime that I have available. So. Um, yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, one more question I'm having around the creation of tools is, is obviously the, the contribution of the, the community. Do you see, or do you get a lot of pull requests? Do you have people helping you out for access center? Yeah. So I get uh, a good number of pull requests. Um, I, th I think, it, I think it varies depending on sort of what the project is. Um, and it, you know, again, this kind of goes into like, depending on the language chosen and sort of what it's built in more or less amount of people are able to make contributions. Um, but I, mm -hmm. I, I get, a, I get a fair number of them. Um, I think to the code base pretty regularly. Uh, I haven't checked the, the main one and the, the new one with sort of the JavaScript and the express installation, um, uh, recently, but I usually get a fairly good number of them. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. That's, that's really lovely. 
Uh, Want to talk a little bit about the the stories around access centers, maybe the the fun ones, um, and also the use cases. Uh, maybe start. Let's start with the use cases. Is there a use case? I mean, you obviously talked about what the tool is for, and people people know it for that. But is there any use case um, where you say people might not know about this? Is there like a little nifty feature or something like that that people usually don't use? Yeah, so for that, I think probably the, the biggest feature that sort of matches this description is uh, there's a ability to sort of do what's called correlated injections in XSS Hunter. And so what that essentially means is you can, when you sort of inject these payloads, you can add a unique ID to it that when the XSS payload fires, um, you, you can essentially like correlate it with the actual request you made that caused that payload uh, you know, fire to occur. Okay. So then you can trace it because a, a very common issue that I sort of had when I was doing this testing, you know, in the very beginning is, you know, I have like a payload that would fire, but it's, uh, yeah, I couldn't really figure out like, okay, how did this payload get to this like, you know, super downstream system, right? Like what initially spawned it. Right. And so building correlated injections is essentially meant to solve that problem where it's like, okay, now I have like a unique ID. I can take that and like, it will automatically correlate it with the correct request and see like, oh, it's because I hit this service with this parameter, right? That is that is pretty pretty cool and pretty interesting. Actually, about the the basic core usage of Access Center, we have made a, a video about um, by by Integrity. So we'll link this up here in this video. If you guys out there want to check this out, um, go make sure to do that. Um, speaking about fun stories. I'm always interested in the, the funniest stories that happen to tool creator um, because of the fact that they have created this tool. Is there anything that pops into your mind? Oh, yeah, there, there's a bunch of um, pretty, pretty funny stories of, of, you know, sort of like payloads firing unexpectedly, um, especially sort of like, yeah, stories that I've heard from people who are like, you know, I can't believe that this worked. Um, I guess one one personal example for myself uh, is you know I, I think at one point I had changed uh, I had like a XSS payload on my on my GoDaddy account um, in, I think in my profile uh, information and um, I completely forgotten that I had done that uh, it was like a couple months before and then I had to call um, you know their support for like a legitimate like regular support request for one of my domains. And upon doing that, uh, immediately while I was on the call, my phone like started vibrating uh, a ton. I was like, "Oh, uh, I got a bunch of XSS payload fires from the support panels uh, internally there." Um, so it's, it's sort of hilarious, because, you know, not even necessarily was my original intention, but it's it's you know sort of these second order uh, XSS vulnerabilities uh, can kind of hit you unexpectedly, and so that was kind of a cool thing right. to see. Yeah. Well, that sounds amazing. And, um, I mean, you already said you, you heard it from, from many other researchers, good stories as well, but have you ever received some feedback, um, that, that blew your mind or like something that was really interesting coming from, from another user that was not yourself? Yeah. Um, well, one of my favorite things is just sort of the number of stories I see of people finding their own bugs, um, which are the things that big, the biggest reason that I've continued to run the platform is just sort of seeing people find really cool bugs with it. Like, um, I, I, I'm probably going to mess up the, the specific details around some of these, but like, you know, somebody had like, I want to say like named their Tesla car an XSS payload and found like an XSS vulnerability in, in Tesla's backend systems with it. Um, you know, just being, putting XSS payloads in these places where you'd like totally not think, and it ends up paying off. And those stories are both well, hilarious, uh, but also just like super cool examples of, sort of the type of vulnerabilities that I was trying to um, sort of promote uh, in terms of like, you know, they're right. really out there and yeah. No, that's cool. I can imagine. I mean, uh, they, they all, they all find stuff because of you and, and then you can basically read about how your little baby, your creation has helped so many others. That is pretty, pretty cool. Let's quickly talk about the future a little bit. Is there a new feature, something really interesting around Access Center coming up that you might want to share already? Yeah, so the biggest thing for me is sort of I wanted to uh, sort of enable people to be able to host their own uh, as easy as possible. 
Um, so I built like the new version, which is uh, you know, much, much, very easy to set up. Essentially, uh, if you have you know Docker installed, Docker Compose installed, you can get it set up and running in basically five minutes. Um, and so it's it's been a lot of you know sort of encouraging people to be able to do this themselves super easily and sort of empower them to run their own tooling. Um, just because you know, in ideal world, you know, I'd, I'd love to have people like, have their own privacy of their own instances and sort of like run everything themselves. Um, so it's been a lot of focus around that and sort of making that experience uh, as good or better than the sort of production service version. That's pretty cool. I mean, five minutes, that's nothing. So everyone out there right now, five minutes, you definitely have them even today. Go check out the latest version of XSS Center and play around with it. Um, that already brings me to my next topic, which is support. Um, tool creators, not just you, like all the tool creators out there, there's so many amazing tools that people create. They need support. And, and one way to support is to donate a little bit of money. And Integrity actually wants to do exactly that. It will donate to your project. I, I can drop that over here right now. Um, but apart from that, I want to ask you, how can people in general help you out and how can they maybe donate a little something to you? Yeah, so the the, the current um, you know the current production service is like a donation page, uh, which sort of helps to um, pay for some of the like costs of running the service, all that good stuff. Um, ironically, one of the things that I just asked for is mainly patience. You know, it's like uh, the biggest limitation usually that I think a lot of tool creators have, especially if they're working in security as well, is sort of you know time to be able to do everything from like abuse complaints to to um, review PRs, to like updating the tool, stuff like this. Uh, so yeah, for me, that's generally been the biggest thing that I've had to work with is like, all right, I need to make time to do, you know, work, social life, uh, tooling, all sorts of stuff. So um, just mainly patience on that front and yeah, appreciate obviously any code contributions as well. And uh, even, even things like vulnerability reports and the software tooling itself, those are always awesome to see, so. Cool. Uh, that that's awesome. All right. Um, I guess, uh, let's wrap this up. Do you have any shout outs or something you want to share with your community, our community? Um, then now would be a good time to do so. Yeah. Um, I actually, the issue is more that I think I have more shout outs than I could possibly mention during this just because, you know, I've worked <laughs> with so many, you know, great people in the security community and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll just say more of a general, like, thanks to everybody I've worked with who's helped me out, you know, what, in various ways, whether it's like, you know, advice with security research or contributions to tooling or, you know, just people I've worked with um, or been lucky enough to, you know, have a, um, to work with in the past. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Thank you so, so much for being here with us today. Um, wish you all the best for the future of XSS Center and of course, obviously, uh, personally as well. And yeah, hope we'll talk soon again. And yeah, thank you one more time. Thank you.